Ryan Garcia's solid performance or busting before our eyes? We answer that next. Please help us hit 1,000 subscribers. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment for us below. Let us know what you think. Uh, Ryan, Gar Ryan Garcia, a.k.a. King Rye, uh, got a big stage on the otherwise quiet weekend of boxing. Uh, the 20-year-old sold out the Fantasy Springs Resort Arena in Indio, California, and got millions of viewers on his Facebook Live uh, fight. But how did he do? Uh, well, he passed the test. Some controversy about that. Uh, some people don't think he deserved the decision. Others just thought the 98-92 scorecards were off. Uh, but look, we, we agreed with the two judges that scored at 98-92. Uh, the only rounds we scored for uh, Morales was the 7th uh, and 8th. We scored the first 6 for uh, King Rye. And then we thought he bounced back nice in the ninth and 10th round. We gave him the last two. Uh, I haven't seen the official scorecards of the judges that scored those two, uh, 98 92 to see what rounds they gave to Morales, but my guess is it's obviously the 7th, and then I would guess the 8th, too, because uh, Morales had another good round there. So, on uh, Friday's check hook, uh, we talked about how Ryan Garcia is a good prospect, but nothing sensational. Uh, we don't see anything you know, incredible about this guy. Uh, we think he would get utterly destroyed by Tank Davis. Uh, everyone's saying that now. So, again, we, we do think he'll have some success. He'll have a good pro career. He'll be a solid fighter. He'll probably pick up a strap or more in his career. He'll be a world champion at some point. Uh, but crowning this kid the second coming? No. No, I mean, I think that was on display yesterday um, in front of millions and millions of people. Now, he, he passed the test, right? Uh, be a tough guy. Um, and we thought, like I said, he was outclassing him to a degree in the first six rounds, and he got caught in the seventh. Uh, he got caught, and he got hurt in the seventh, and he, and he got beat up in the eighth. And we thought in the ninth round he came back. You could see he was working off the back foot more. Um, but that established a jab, and he actually throws a real nice jab. Uh, that helped him out a lot when he was in trouble. He also held a lot. Um, so, you know, you could say he was he, he was relegated to running and holding against Carlos Morales. That's the other way you could look at this. But he held a lot throughout the fight. Even early in the first six rounds or so, he, he was holding quite a bit, which is a bad sign to me to be holding against a guy of that level. Uh, Carlos Mor Morales is probably a step up. You know, it's probably the same level as Jason Velez's last fight. When you look at it, Morales got shut out. Uh, to Alberto Mercado, stood up and, 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 and took a beating and, and, and survived the 10-round fight that he had with Machado, but he got outclassed. He gave Garcia a fight. So what does that mean? Well, it means Garcia is not quite ready for the brightest lights and the biggest stage just yet. He's not ready yet. He's not at that world championship level yet, but he's only 20, so he's, he's got time to grow. Um, we saw some good things with Ryan Garcia. It's, it's not all bad. Right? It's just he's not ready for a championship level. Um, he needs to establish the jab and use his height and reach. He's, what, 5'10", 5'11"? He needs to use his natural size and reach advance. Not too many guys at uh, 130 are going to be 5'10", 5'11". Um, but look, Andre Wood was knocked down by Darnell Boone early in his career. Earl Spence was in serious, serious trouble. You guys can go back and watch this if you're not familiar with a, a, a pretty decent fighter, too. Uh, but an opponent named... Emmanuel Larte. Um, so getting in trouble doesn't mean you're a trash fighter. It means you need to continue to get better. Um, so, like, he has to establish a jab. He has to, he's, he's got good foot movement, right? But he, he doesn't, he, he resorts to holding. Don't let him get that close to you. You have the height and, and reach advantage. Um, but what does he do well? All right, he throws, uh, he's got, Really, really good footwork. He, he does, right? And you can see that when he was in trouble, his, his footwork, his feet are, he's got good legs, his feet are quick, and he knows how to, he knows how to plant his feet. Uh, everything he does with his footwork is, is pretty good. He's got nimble feet. He sets his feet well going backwards. Uh, he shifts his power, and he throws really nice, clean combinations. Um, so he... And he's got a good jab. He just needs to establish the jab, right? Because you saw that, that that jab was what kept him out of trouble. Uh, he, he kept the stick and, and he kept Morales from, from walking in the front door against him. So 
you know, we would say he, he's got excellent footwork. He plants his feet well and sits down on his punches. He fires nice combinations, and he's got a good jab. Um, he's he's got to work on, on, on avoiding shots with head movement as opposed to holding. Um, but there's a lot of things to like about about Ryan Garcia. You know, we're not down on him. We weren't up on him. You know, we weren't as high as others were. And we haven't, you know, we're not saying he's a bust either. Um, it, it was a top performance, and he got through it. So give him kudos for that. But also, let's, let's be realistic about it and say, look, this is a guy that Machado, a world champion, destroyed and shut out. He gave Garcia a heck of a fight. So put that performance in perspective. We would overall... Rate his performance a C plus, maybe a B minus. He, he got the job done, but it was tougher than expected. Um, so take that for what you will. In addition to King Rai, Ryan Garcia, uh, Golden Boy's future is really, really bright right now. And that's the second thing we wanted to get to. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of fighters in the Golden Boy stable. They have a plethora of young talent, young superstars in the making with superstar talent. Uh, you know, we, there's Jaime Munguia, of course, who's only 21. There's uh, Ryan Garcia, Virgil Ortiz, and Alex Rincon, who was also on the card last night. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, uh, Jamie Munguia, an all-action world champion, and I'm just waiting for him to get into a mega showdown with Jared Hurd. I mean, that would be fight of the year written all over it. That, that would be a, a war. Both fighters are big, strong, big punchers, and are defensively flawed to say the least. I mean, that, that's a knockout, a devastating knockout waiting to happen. Mangi is just 21. Um, he's got good power. He's massive. He, he's probably the biggest 154 pounder I've ever seen. Uh, Jarrett Hurd's probably the second, but he, he looks bigger than Hurd. He's six foot tall, a uh, big, strong body. I mean, he, he'll be able to go up to 160 and probably 168. Uh, again, he's still a baby, just 21. Uh, it looks like he can still make the weight, even though he gains an incredible amount of weight. So we don't know how long he's going to stay there, but it looks like if he really wants to, he can. Um, he, he made the, the weight against Saddam Ali on, on relatively short notice as he, as he uh, filled in as a replacement for Beefy Smith. And then he went and beat Beefy Smith. Um, at, at that weight. So, look, Manguia, there's a lot to like and dislike about Manguia. I, I get that. And, um, you know, we do think that he would lose to Jared Hurd if they fought next, but they're not going to. And, and Golden Boy is going to be a little safe with him and build him up, and they have to get him better defensively. I mean, he even with Ali, who he destroyed, he got hit at will, right? So they, they have to secure, you know, shore him up a little bit defensively. Um, but he's only 21, so the future's real bright for him. We're going to see, you know, him fighting on, on future cards, um, on Cinco de Mayo and, and, and Mexican Independence Day for, for years to come. Um, then there's Ryan Garcia, who we talked about, right? Um, world of opportunity. He brings the, the, the million plus Twitter followers or Instagram followers, whatever he has. Um, he's going to bring a lot of attention to the sport. Great guy. Really personable, you know, good looking, good looking kid, you know, movie star looks, all that stuff. And he just turned 20. Um, so he's not even in his prime yet. I mean, he's still, still a baby. He hasn't hit his physical prime yet. He's going to have to get better. But the future is, is bright for him in terms of making money. Um, you know, he'll probably, he should say at 130 for as long as he can, but at 5'10, 5'11. To continue to make 130 is going to be real tough. So the future may be at 135 and 140 for him. He will eventually outgrow it as his body is not even physically matured yet. Uh, but he looks in trouble at 135. So you know, we look for him to get his first world title shot at 130, and he'll, he'll do some damage there. And then after that, he, like, he's going to have to he's going to have to improve in some areas which we t talked about earlier. Um, then there's Virgil Ortiz, who we'll see fight on the Canelo Triple G undercard. In a step-up fight, uh, Virgil Ortiz is just 20 years old. And he's also a uh, 5'11". A 5'11", 140-pounder with a massive punch. Um, this guy is 10-0, 10 knockouts. Again, we think he may be the best prospect in the sport. A Dallas, Texas product. Um, this is, in my estimation, obviously the best prospect in Golden Boy Stable. He will have a better career. And we said this on Friday's Check Hook. Go back and check it out. We said this on, uh, on Friday. 
that Virgil Ortiz will have a better career than Ryan Garcia. He'll win more titles, make more defenses, yada, yada. He'll, he'll be higher on pound-for-pound pound list uh, than Ryan Gar- Garcia. And they're the same age, so we'll, we'll get to compare them side by side. Um, you know, Ortiz is physically stronger and, and he's bigger, um, so they won't always be in the same weight class. But you know, we'll get to see their careers, uh, Ortiz's career and, and Garcia, unfold at the same time. Um, look, he's a 140-pounder right now. Uh, at 5 level, I don't know how much longer he can make that weight. He looks like he's making it comfortably. He doesn't look drained when he fights. But he's going to grow, obviously, into a full welterweight. In the next three or four years, he'll be a, he'll be a, a full-size welterweight. And he'll have an opportunity to make a ton of money with Oscar in that weight class. Um, obviously, Errol, he's from Dallas, Texas. Obviously, Errol Spence is from Dallas. At 140, you have Mo Hooker, who's from Dallas. So you can make these fights. Um, you, you can make these fights with, with the guys in Texas. Uh, you know, have, have these massive homecoming fights for him. You can put him on a lot of cards. You can, you can do a lot of things with him. Um, especially once you see him step up. And this Ortiz, who's Ortiz... Or, Ortiz is, who, Roberto Ortiz is fighting Roberto Ortiz. And you remember Roberto Ortiz, he fought Lucas Matisse, and he fought Cletus Seldon on HBO. He's kind of tailor-made for a puncher, right? Like, if you're a big puncher, this kid Ortiz can be hit. And you're going to see Roberto Ortiz, we're talking about it. You know, Virgil Ortiz is fighting Roberto Ortiz on the Canelo Triple G undercard. And it's going to really highlight him. This is good matchmaking, because Roberto Ortiz is tailor-made uh, for a big puncher. He was tailor-made for Matisse, he was tailor-made for Seldon, and now he's going to be tailor-made for Ortiz. Um, the future is super bright for Ortiz, and we're going to start to get, see this and, and get a look at it and, and see just how good he is. You know, he may be a world champion, a world champion, as soon as 2019 next year. Like I said, he's 10 and 0, 10 knockouts, the power, the size, everything on this kid is real. And he's also only 20 years old. Um, so in my estimation, like we said on Friday's check, this is the best prospect in the Golden Boy stable. It may be the best prospect in boxing, and I'm serious about that too. Finally, Alex Rincon, who we saw on the undercard uh, of the Ryan Garcia fight, 23-year-old. So he's actually the old man of, of the Golden Boy, really young prospect at 23. Ran his record to 5-0, and uh, all five knockouts. He was pushed into the third round for the first time in his career. Um, he's a 6'2 southpaw, uh, southpaw junior middleweight. 6'2 junior middleweight southpaw. This guy's going to be trouble for anyone. Right, no one's gonna want to fight him. That could be the biggest detra- uh, detraction for him is that no one wants to actually step in the ring with a six foot two Southpaw junior middleweight. Not too many guys at one fifty four or or, or are six foot two, um, and to make him a Southpaw and a body puncher on top of all that makes him trouble for anyone. Uh, he can really, really attack and go to the body. Um, there's. And, and, and he's a little bit raw. Uh, you know, I, I don't think he's ready for a world title fight yet or, or any time in the foreseeable future. He's only had five fights. Um, he's also a, a, a Dallas, Texas product. But there's a lot to like about this kid. Um, it, it, just like his personality, he's not glitz and glamour. It's, it's workmanlike. His workout regimen is, is intense um, and, and relentless. And he's gonna be he's gonna be trouble at 154 pounds in the near future. Um, think about it: a six foot two junior middleweight southpaw who cracks to the body, who can beat you from the outside and from the inside. He's he's got a bright future, especially in that weight class where there's a lot of lot of talent, a lot of good fights. Um, again, we don't think he's ready now, or, or will he be ready in in the next year or two? It's it's probably a few years out until he's ready for a world title. But he will get there. He'll be brought around. He'll be brought up rather slowly, you know. Um, small step up fights along the way. Uh, you know, three, four years down the road, though, we think he'll be ready to be a world champion and, and to take those big fights. Uh, so you have all four of those guys. You have Gar- Garcia, Munguia, uh, Virgil Ortiz, and, and Alex Rincon. So four Golden Boy prospects who are all 23 years of age or younger. Who are all undefeated and have really, really bright futures. Um, so, you know, people have been saying, like, Golden Boy's on its way out. Golden Boy is dying. Not with these guys. These guys are all have the right style, flash, or, and they're all in and around the same, right, uh, right weight class to make Oscar a lot of money. You know, that 135 to 154 pounds. Lightweights, there's, there's a lot of good lightweights. There's a lot of good 140, 147, 154 pounders. 
Um, that's kind of been the talent division there. Anywhere from junior welter to junior middle has been, you know, traditionally the most stacked divisions. Um, they're good now. There's a lot of interesting matchups, a lot of interesting names that these guys can fight. So we think Golden Boy is not only not dying, uh, we think the future is really, really bright with these four guys. Let us know what you think. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments below. For Sunday Morning Champion, this is 3D Boxing signing off saying thank you and God bless. Enjoy 3D Boxing vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingvlog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.